this is a trailer that's going to be utilized and hopefully then agents can use it uh, whoever they want to check it out. Uh, it's been built with Rio Grande Basin initiative money and so it's got several systems on here that I would like for you to be able to understand how each one of them works. And so I have at the front here start off with the terrain barrel. And so this is a blue barrel that I've just put covering over this. These are just uh, wood slats that we put. I've used some metal strapping around it to hold them in place. This is going to be the overflow. Then we want to have it say this is going to go out to the rain garden. On this in here, I also then put a little uh, cover over the top of it. And then this inside, we drilled that uh, six inch hole. And inside it, I have a window screening then I've added rocks in to hold it in place as well to help filter that water and keep larger debris out. As an option, I can have, we, most of these will have a two, two inch thin fittings in here or bunk holes in here, and I can take out the one where it has very fine threads and then insert in it then uh, a tubing or pipe that has the same threads as this does, a two inch, and then I could thread it on and so this is going to be a way that I can catch water from the house. And so I would have water coming straight from my downspout that would fall right into here. And then this water would go down and go and run into my rain barrel. Then as it fills up, then this is what would be my overflow, or it could be then turned to the side and go to my next rain barrel as well. So I could cook and connect several of those together with this process. So this is designed just to give them the ideal of how then to connect in a rain barrel from my roof straight into my downspout and being able to utilize it from there. Once I move from a rain barrel into a much larger collection tank, we have a 340 gallon collection tank. I have a roof and then, then also a gutter here that's going to move the water into that storage tank. And so I want to have this as one part of the system, but the other is going to be bringing water out that I will go through a screen, then go through a pump, and then I'm going to move this and so I would have a full disinfection system. And so I'll be looking at water moving into each one of these filters and then there to a UV light. And then from there I could be able to drink this water or in this case I'm going to send water back on top of the roof. And so I'm going to turn the pump on first. These are a very simple pump that has one little green button or blue button on it that I will push and then should be turned on. And so we see water first coming to fill up the first filter, then it's going to fill up the second, and then the third, and then water's going to come through here. I have it cut off here. So once we've got this here in full uh, pressurized, it should shut the pump off uh, in a short time. These filters I have, I have three of them set up. One is going to be a 20 micron filter, then I have a 5 micron filter, then a charcoal filter. These need to be set up according to what then the manufacturer says needs to be used in our ultraviolet light. This one here is a class B light, which is not then suitable for then disinfecting water to the full extent. It's, it's more for then polishing water, whereas this one right here is a class A. And it's a class A and they both may have the same intensity of light, but this in here has a control on it that's going to be monitoring the clarity of that water or the turbidity of that water. And if it gets cloudy on that light so that that light cannot shine through and destroy any of the pathogens, it will shut that water off. And so this here is going to be in the controls. It's going to tell me not only how many days it's been used, but also then when that water is not going to be acceptable to be utilized. These light bulbs are designed to be replaced once a year. The filters need to be replaced as needed in that. So once I got this water in here, I could be able to drink the water right here from this faucet and have it safe to drink in time. There's things that we need to know. We need to follow manufacturer's recommendations. The water first that comes through there may not be fully disinfected. So I need to understand all of those things before I start looking at then this as a water supply. Now I'm going to turn this water on so it's going to rain on top of the roof and then we're going to follow this water first is going to fill up the first flush. And this is water that's going to be diverted. And in the bottom of it I have a plug that I'm just going to leave loose and so when it's starting to fill up that water is going to be draining out. 
but then as it then fills up, then we're going to see it's going to overflow into what's called a wet system, where the water's going to go down, then go across, then rise back up to go into the storage tank. And so I'm going to turn this on, and so it's going to be starting to rain on top of that roof. And as it fills up that gutter, then it's going to, you're going to be able to see water coming down. And it's going to be filling up that first flush. And I can adjust this so that water comes off of there faster or slower, depending on what I want to happen. And so we see that it's first filling up this first flush. This water then is going to be diverted. The goal is to have this drain so it drains all this water out within 24 hours. Then once that water is diverted, then the water is going to go into my line. That's going to run it up and into that storage tank. Some of the research has shown that there's only mixing taking place right in the top one foot of this. And the rest of the water is going to be diverted and it's not going to be then contaminating then the collection tank supply. So this, this is pretty well getting full. At the same time, we can see that this is also filling up on that other side and then water is flowing into that storage tank. So I can have this system running all the time if I need to so that we can watch and see the water. I'll see enough bubbles in there to give me an idea of where the water's moving and moving into that collection tank from our gutter on down. One way to determine how much water is in that storage tank is have a clear tubing that I could have connected to a faucet and it's going to show me where the water level is in this collection tank. I like other devices that I could set on the tank that would give a dial or some way to indicate then how much water is in there, simply because if I leave this where water is in here, if sunlight would get into it, algae is going to start growing in here and it's going to start turning green and I won't be able to see how much water I have in there. If I am going to use this, my preference is in once I've checked the supply, turn this off and then drain this water out and then wait till next time before I utilize it again and then measure next time. And so I could drain that out and leave it there uh, rather than having water in there all the time. Now this collection tank also has an overflow and so once this storage tank is full from the rains it can then overflow here would go out then I have it capped so that the other critters cannot get back into here. It needs to either be screened or then cap so that I can keep them things out of there. The other thing I didn't show you that I also have a screen inside so that it's going to keep out the leaves and debris that might fall on that roof and so it's going to screen those out before it goes into that collection tank. I want to show what is inside this collection tank and so I have this much smaller one that I've cut the inside of it out so that we can see what's on the inside. The first is having the water coming off of that roof going into the storage tank. We have what's called a common inlet and that's where the water would go down to the bottom. Then I have a U-turn to turn that water back up and so that it's forcing up rather than down. And so if there's any sediment in the bottom, it's not going to stir it up. And so that's one of the things that should be inside the collection tank. The other, the highest quality water inside of a tank is going to be closer to the surface. And so I have here what's called a floating intake where that this is a, has a float on it. So it's going to be staying at the top of the surface. And then this is connected out to where it goes to my pump or to my supply. And so I have here a screen that the water is going to go through it to go then to my pump. And it's going to float and it's going to have then it's going to be tethered so that it will not go all the way down to the bottom, but it's going to go up and down to take water closer to the surface. Then the other thing that I have is then if I have makeup water from a well. And if I'm in a city, a municipal supply may not be acceptable using this here. But from a well, I can have this as a floating device that when the water goes down to way down to the bottom, that it would pull a lever there here at the top and that would bring in city water, or bring in then well water so that I can add makeup water. It's only going to add a very small amount to the bottom of that because once it's pulled back up, it will shut itself back off. So it's a mechanical device. There are those that are electrical that I could use as well. Then the other thing that's inside here is in my overflow. 
And so I have an overflow that's here that the water's going to come out, but it's tied in on the inside so that I can uh, then have it what's called a skimming overflow. And so on this one here, I'm going to have a small P-trap in it where I'd have a little bit of water so the critters cannot go in to it. And then it's also the cut at an angle, so it's going to take the water out from the top and then have it go into my overflow.